If I've created an Edpuzzle video in my Edpuzzle account and I want to assign it in Canvas, once I'm done creating my video, I am not going to choose Assign. Now you can see here there's some Canvas classes. I can't actually assign my Edpuzzle from the Edpuzzle. So the first thing to do is to create your videos in Edpuzzle. Then don't assign them in Edpuzzle. You're going to go into Canvas. And in Canvas, you're going to create an assignment, give it a title, tell the students what instructions you have, watch the video below and answer all questions, be sure to complete the entire video. You might want to tell them to answer all X number of questions, like give them a specific number, because sometimes students don't see all of the questions. And you'll see that in the example that I'm going to show you today. Then you're going to choose the number of points that you want your assignment worth and you're going to give a due date. But for the submission type, you are going to choose external tool. Then you're going to click on find and you're going to scroll down. And in this case, you'll notice that I have two Edpuzzles, Edpuzzle and Edpuzzle Pro Trial. This first Edpuzzle is from copying my course over from a different course. This was the Edpuzzle I used before. I'll show you at the end of the video how to disable this or get rid of this from the list. The Edpuzzle that you want to use should be the one that says Edpuzzle Pro Trial, and it's kind of spelled inaccurately. It has E and D capitalized. So this is the one that you want to use. If you didn't import a class over from last year, this is probably the only one that you will see. However, again, if you see a different version of Edpuzzle, it is because you probably copied your course over from last year where you had added Edpuzzle yourself as an external tool. So again, choose Edpuzzle Pro Trial. Now, I have already logged in before using Canvas and this pro trial, so it didn't ask me to sign in to Edpuzzle. So mine automatically shows you my content and my folders. If this is your first time using Edpuzzle, I recommend going to Edpuzzle itself first, creating your video there. And then when you're ready, come and add the external tool into your assignment and it will probably prompt you to sign into your Edpuzzle account. Once you sign into your Edpuzzle account, you will see any content that you have created. I've created a bunch of folders, and then I also have some videos that I have not organized into folders. I'm going to choose this one here, and I'm going to click on the circle where it says watch. If I click elsewhere, nothing will happen. I have to click on the eyeball that says watch. And I can preview my video here, but if our, I just created it in Edpuzzle, so I don't need to really look at it here. But you might want to look just to ensure that it's the correct one. And then you're going to choose Assign. Now, when I assign it, I like to make sure that I prevent skipping so students can't skip ahead. And I also like to turn on closed captions. And so when I create my Edpuzzle videos, I always upload any videos that I create, like a screencast, into YouTube. And then when I add them into Edpuzzle, because they were in YouTube, they should have closed captioning attached to them because YouTube automatically adds, adds closed captioning through AI. So I like to turn on closed captioning for students that might need that accommodation. And then I press assign one more time. And when I click that, I'm just back to this configure external tool and Edpuzzle Pro Trials selected. I'm just going to click select at this point. And yet now you'll notice that within this URL box, there's actually a URL. So make sure you have a due date. And then I'm going to save and publish this assignment. When you look at it here, you'll see your video attached. You'll see any students that have completed this assignment. So right now, no one has completed it, so I see nothing here. But I could also click on questions and see the questions that I've added. So there are three particular questions for this, and then there was one note at the beginning for students. When your student goes to Edpuzzle, what they see is any instructions that you might have provided up at the top. They see the video here and they can press play for the video. 
but what they'll also see is how many questions they have to answer. And so at two minutes and 57 questions in, so at the very end, there are actually three separate open-ended questions that the students need to answer. And as they watch the video, it will prevent them from moving forward. You can see as I try to fast forward, it says that it is locked. But I have the opportunity to turn on closed captioning and I can choose which language and I can change the volume. I could op also open the video into full screen. When a student finishes answering the questions at the end of the video, they will see a notification if they finish the video. So it says video completed 100%. Correct responses are zero out of three. And that was because these were short answer questions. And so you'll notice in the grade question, it says to be graded. Now, sometimes if you have a mix of short answer and multiple choice, it might say that you have one out of three responses correct because one of them was multiple choice they got correct. The other two still need to be graded. So um, students might notice in the grade book they have a zero out of three automatically, but here it says that it needs to be graded. So if it's multiple choice questions, they automatically get graded and go to the grade book. If it's short answer questions, the teacher needs to go in and grade them. So if you have a mix of those, make sure that you grade those different assignments. Now, as a teacher, when you are in your Edpuzzle account, I'm gonna go ahead and refresh because a student just completed that assignment. And now what you'll see here is I had one student who completed the assignment and watched 100% of this assignment. There is no grade because it has yet to be graded. It tells you when they last watched it. So two minutes ago, the student watched the video and it tells you when they turned it in. Over here on the three dots, I could reset progress. So if a student says, can I redo this assignment? You can allow students to redo the assignment if you click on those three dots and reset their progress. Now, up at the top, um, imagine that you had a bunch of students here. There'd be a whole list of them that you can scroll down. But up at the top right here, it says three answers to grade. So there were three questions in this video. So I have three answers to grade for this particular student. And it would tell you how many total you had to grade. If you had 10 students, it would say 30 answers to grade because there were three questions per video. So if I click on that, I have the option to mark ungraded content as correct. And you can see that it lists the question and then the answer, question, answer, question, answer. If I had multiple students, it would group all of the questions or all of the answers per each question. So there would be like all 10 answers for this question, all 10 answers for the next. And so what I like to do is to grade these. I try and make it as quick as possible and I just scroll down through each of them and skim. If I see something that's wrong or inappropriate, I can choose to click the X. And so what the X does is it gives a student a zero out of 100. The check mark gives them a 100 out of 100. And you'll notice that these questions are worth 100 points. Now, my assignment was worth 10 points total and I had three questions. So basically that means that each question is worth 3.3 points or 3.3333 points. And so when Edpuzzle makes them out of 100, and when the answers go into the grade book, it actually does all of the math for you. So if this was worth 3.333 questions and the student got it correct, that would be what gets added to the Canvas grade book. And so it does all of the math calculations for you here. And so I personally like to just scroll through and if anything looks wrong, I click the X. You'll notice that up at the top, it says mark ungraded as correct. And so I just skim through and click X's on the ones that are bad. And then I will then just click mark ungraded as correct and it will mark all the rest of them that looked good as correct with one press of the button. I can also give students partial credit. So maybe they got it half right. I could give them a 50 out of 100 and I can type in points here. You'll notice that within Canvas, there is a comment feature available. And this comment feature 
when you add them in Edpuzzle, students can see them in Edpuzzle. With the LTI integration of Canvas, using it as an external tool, when you click on comments and type any comments, the student will actually never see it. They won't see it in their Canvas gradebook. They won't see it in this Edpuzzle assignment. So do not bother to use any comments in Edpuzzle. If you had that extra external tool, so you had the Edpuzzle from maybe last year imported into your class, so you had multiple Edpuzzles in your list of external tools, the way to get rid of that is to go to Settings, choose Apps, and then View App Configurations. And as you scroll down, you're going to see different apps that you have installed within your Canvas course. Most of them have locks by them. Those are ones that the district has added to your Canvas account and you can't change anything about them when there's a lock. This one here, this Edpuzzle that doesn't have a lock, this is one that I added last year and I added the key code and the secret code, all that stuff from Edpuzzle. And if I do not want that in my list anymore, because we now have the pro trial, I can get rid of this Edpuzzle. So it's not locked. I have the option of a gear on the right hand side and I can choose delete. And when I delete that, it will no longer be available in my external tools. So the only one that I will now see in my external tools is the one that the district has sent out to us, which is because we now have the Edpuzzle district wide account that our district is paying for. So I will now only see this Edpuzzle.